tech family, I am so excited to bring you this video on the next generation of Wi-Fi routers, including Wi-Fi 6E. Honestly, few devices that I review bring such game-changing improvements as the ones I'm going to talk about today. I got so into testing these devices, guys, I packed two of them in my suitcase, flew them to Arizona to try my large house. Then I flew them back to the apartment in New York City to make this video. I can tell you, the airport security was extremely confused when all I had in my luggage was an asthma puffer, several laptops, and multiple Wi-Fi routers. By the way, if you're new here, my name is Josh, and I review a lot of tech from the perspective of what it's like to actually own and use the devices. If at the end of this video you like what you watched, do me a solid and smash that like button and get subscribed. Not only does it show your appreciation for the work that goes into making these, but as I always say, it makes my mum very proud. I ended up buying four Wi-Fi 6E routers for this video. Three Asus GT AXE 11000 and one Netgear Nighthawk AXE 11000. These Wi-Fi 6E routers not only enable you to use the new 6 GHz band, but they also add a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port and they support link aggregation. The Asus router also supports creating a Wi-Fi mesh network, which as you'll see, when combined with that new 6 GHz band offers jaw-dropping performance. Anyway, today I'm going to cover as much of the new tech in these routers as possible. And since these devices are on the bleeding edge, I'll share what I learned setting them up because it wasn't straightforward. Let's start off with Wi-Fi 6E. The basics of it is this. Wi-Fi 6E uses the same technology as Wi-Fi 6, but adds the new 6 GHz band of radio waves. When we communicate via Wi-Fi, our devices use channels. You can think of a channel as dividing up a band like 5 GHz into multiple lanes, such as on a highway. Your traffic then transmits through that lane. Through channel bonding, traffic can be shared across adjacent channels for greater throughput. The issue is that the 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz bands don't have a lot of channels available. If you're in a metro area with lots of neighbours with Wi-Fi, these limited channels become congested and speed slow. The 6 GHz band isn't congested at all and adds a ton more channels, similar to expanding a highway with many new lanes. When you combine these together through bonding, you get a lot more throughput. The downside is that the range of 6 GHz is shorter than 5 GHz, but more on that later. For testing, I didn't have any Wi-Fi 6E capable laptops in the house, so I ordered a Wi-Fi 6E card from Amazon, link below. I swapped the Wi-Fi card in my Asus Swift X to the new one. I wanted to upgrade my everyday laptop, the Dell XPS 9310, but sob, that didn't come with upgradable Wi-Fi. This is a perfect example of why it is so important to buy a laptop with upgradable parts. Anyway, I still tested with the XPS to compare how an older Wi-Fi 6 laptop works with one of these new routers. Before I show you the results, I quickly discovered that even with the latest version of Windows 11 and Wi-Fi drivers, if I run all my bands 2.4 GHz, 5 GHz and 6 using the same network name, the computer never uses the new 6 GHz band. It always runs on 5 GHz or 2.4. Heck, even my Samsung Galaxy Ultra phone with Wi-Fi 6E wouldn't connect on the new 6 GHz band. When I separated the bands by giving 6 GHz its own name and ensuring the name was visible, I was able to see it and connect to it in Windows 11, but not Windows 10. There are supposed fixes for seeing a 6 GHz Wi-Fi network on Windows 10 by editing the registry, which I'll link below. I tried this on my Wi-Fi 6E equipped ThinkPad Extreme Gen 4 running Windows 10, but the fixes did not work for me. By the way, I also wasn't able to get the 6 GHz band working under Linux with Fedora 35's default install. My internet speed has a max of 940 megabits down and 880 megabits up. You can see that my wide connection is getting close to that. But here's a taste of the magic to come. The 6 GHz band that Wi-Fi 6E enables gets really close to that max download speed. This is when the laptop is in the same room as the router. Even when the laptop is in a room over 15 feet away behind two walls, there is little degradation in download speeds. Throughout my testing, I did not find the 6 GHz band had noticeably worse coverage than the 5 GHz band, even in my large house in Arizona. Switching to look at upload speeds, they are a lot worse than download, but the Wi-Fi 6E 6 GHz connection is still the fastest when in the same room. It's odd as it drops a lot when I'm in the far room. 
I'm going to show you my results from my house in Arizona in a sec, and they are a lot better than this, by the way. A note about the testing methodology. Even though I use speedtest.net for my results, which certainly could have other factors affecting them, I did test multiple times, averaged the results, and ensured I was always connecting to the same end server. I also ran the tests within minutes of each other to try to eliminate other variances. This isn't a perfect test methodology, but I do think it's good enough to get the point across. Plus, to isolate this, here are the actual max transmit speeds between the laptop and the Wi-Fi router. You can see that the 6 GHz connection posts the highest transmit speeds except when uploading from that far room. Now, what I just showed you is really just an appetizer. Here's the main course. The real magic comes if you run multiple of these routers in a mesh network, taking advantage of the super fast 6 GHz band for the backbone. This means one router, the host, connects to the internet. That router provides Wi-Fi to devices near it, but it also connects via the 6 GHz band using separate channels to node routers placed further away. They then in turn extend Wi-Fi to devices near them. This means your device doesn't have to communicate as far as it would have if you only had one router, and therefore there's less signal degradation and faster Wi-Fi. This is extremely useful if you want to blanket a large house with fast Wi-Fi, or in my case extend a wired network because you don't want to run an Ethernet cable through a certain part of your house. My new house is a good example of that. It's a large, single-floored place, and the box where the internet comes into the house is on the far side from the office and YouTube studio. Unfortunately, due to the design of the house, there are separate attics for these areas with no crawl space between them. So I can't easily run an ethernet cable to bring fast internet to the office and studio without either having it visible to the naked eye or doing major drywall damage to fish cables through the wall. So, I tried running two of these routers in a mesh network in my house. For my tests, I placed one Wi-Fi router in the closet where the internet comes into the house and the other in my office which is about 40 feet away through three walls. Unfortunately, even though I flew these routers to Arizona, I stupidly forgot to bring a Wi-Fi 6E equipped laptop, so I had to run some tests on my Samsung Galaxy Ultra smartphone instead, as it has Wi-Fi 6E. Here are the results. The most stunning one is where I plug my computer in the office directly via Ethernet into the node router in that room. The node router used the 6 GHz Wi-Fi band as backhaul to communicate to the house router plugged into the internet. No cables connecting the two routers together. I got insane speeds. It's getting close to the speeds that you'd get when the routers are connected using an Ethernet cable as the backhaul. By the way, that setup is essentially just a wide 1 gigabit Ethernet network. Even the upload speeds were superb using the Wi-Fi 6 GHz band as a backhaul. I was shocked as upload speeds weren't great from a distance in the New York City apartment. This is fantastic as even in a large house, you don't need to run cables to connect the routers for super fast internet. I then tried the opposite of using an Ethernet cable to connect the two routers together as the backbone, and used my phone on the 6 GHz band to communicate to the node router. Speeds were a tad worse, but still in the same ballpark. Funnily enough, in this setup, when the computer was using the Wi-Fi 5 GHz band to communicate to the node router, it was a little worse on download, but better on upload. Again, similar speeds though overall. I'd presume some of the higher scores you are seeing in Arizona on the 5 GHz Wi-Fi band are likely because there is far less Wi-Fi congestion than in New York City. Plus, I was testing on the HP NV34, a large desktop computer that could have better antennas than the laptops. When I tried a full Wi-Fi mesh network with the computer communicating via the 5 GHz band to the node router, and then the node router communicating on back via the 6 GHz Wi-Fi band to the host router, speeds dropped a good amount. If you can avoid that double hop of Wi-Fi and either plug the device into the node router or use a wired backhaul between the two routers, please do so. It will speed things up. Lastly, when I compared a single Wi-Fi 6E router to an older Wi-Fi 6 one, the Wi-Fi 6E router gave me a solid boost over the older Wi-Fi 6 one, particularly in upload speeds. I presume this is due to the more robust antenna setup of the newer router. One thing I learned about Wi-Fi mesh networks is that the network won't automatically switch the device from communicating with one router to another as you move it around the house. It will remain connected to the original router it connected to. 
To fix this, you must disconnect and reconnect to the network. Let's switch gears and talk about the 2.5 gigabit Ethernet connection on these devices, as that's also a pretty big leap forward. Both the Netgear router and Asus ones come with a single 2.5 gigabit Ethernet connection. The rest of the connections are 1 gigabit. Many new laptops and desktops are starting to come with 2.5 gigabit Ethernet connections. The issue here is how the hell you use the 2.5 gigabit connection when the other connections to your router are less than that. Seriously, to connect one computer by 2.5 gigabits to another, you need the router to have at least two 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports, one for each of the devices that are communicating. Otherwise, your connection speed will be governed by the slowest link. Not exactly. There are use cases where you can take advantage of the 2.5 gigabit connection. Take one of my cases. I'm simultaneously uploading a newly rendered video to YouTube on my 1 gigabit internet connection, while backing up that very same video to my network attached storage, also via a 1 gigabit connection. It's a bit of an edge case, but there is another case that I think is more useful. Most network attached storage devices, also known as NAS, have multiple 1 gigabit Ethernet ports, allowing you to link aggregate these connections together, therefore increasing the bandwidth that you can access the NAS, i.e. two 1 gigabit connections will give you 2 gigabits of bandwidth. This is incredibly useful for someone like me, where I pull down about 300 gigabytes of data from the NAS to each and every new laptop I review. A very time consuming process. Cutting this in half would be a huge win, but what I discovered is that link aggregation doesn't exactly work that way. It essentially acts like widening a road from one lane to two. You are not doubling the speed of a single car that can travel down the road, but instead enabling a second car to travel at the same time. This means I can bring down two files each at 1 gigabit, but not double the speed that I can access a single file. With a little research, I found a new setting that you can change in SMB, the protocol that OSs like Windows use for file sharing. It's called SMB multi-channel. By enabling it on my NAS and retrying the file copy, I was able to double the speed I could access a single file, downloading it at 2 gigabits. Little side note, you don't even need to aggregate the two Ethernet connections to the NAS to do this. SMB multi-channel will work with independent Ethernet connections. Anyway, using this method, I was able to take advantage of the faster speed the 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port on the router offered and substantially speed up my workflow. By the way, before I finish, the reason I didn't talk about the Netgear Nighthawk 6E router that I purchased is that even though the speeds were similar to the Asus, it doesn't offer mesh networking and I couldn't get link aggregation to work between it and my Synology NAS. Since they are priced similarly, I just felt the Asus was a better buy and ended up returning the Netgear early in my testing. Let's wrap. The name Wi-Fi 6E seems like these devices are a small, incremental step up from Wi-Fi 6 routers that came before them. They are not. The addition of the 6 GHz band makes a real noticeable difference. Plus, manufacturers have used this as an opportunity to leap forward in other places, like offering a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet connection and the ability to use them in a mesh network with that fast 6 GHz band as a backbone. Look, for many of you, you probably don't need these, but there are a lot of cases where I would tell you to splurge and buy one. If you have a 1 gigabit internet connection and you want to make the most of it via Wi-Fi, if you want to access a local network attached storage device as fast as possible without paying for an expensive upgrade to 10 gigabit networking gear, or you want to extend fast internet throughout your house without running ethernet cables everywhere, or you just like to future-proof your purchases. In all these cases, these devices are going to make a big difference. It's rare I give an overwhelming buy rating on a device, but for these Asus GT AXE 11000 routers, I'm giving them two thumbs up and highly recommending them. Well, that's all for today, folks. If you like this video, you know what to do. Make sure to smash that like button and get subscribed. There is a lot more content coming your way. And please join me on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter for plenty of behind the scenes coverage and looks at upcoming tech. Links in the description below. Till next time, go do something awesome with your day and I will catch you later.